Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story and friend to the channel, Frank Troost, shares his collection with us. And this one, well, usually you're seeing Chrysler's. Frank, what do we have here today? It's a 1957 Ford Thunderbird. Ford Thunderbird. And this one, well, it's the baby blue bird. So let's take a look at this. And I think one of Thunderbird's finest designs right there. Now it's a little windy out, so we're going to deal with that if you're getting a little wind noise. Hopefully not. The great grill has some look of the Ferrari, maybe of that time frame. The hood scoop, just the right bulge where needed. Always enjoyed the single headlight. Let's take a look at this one from the side. Now, Frank, how long have you had this one? I've probably had that three or four years. Now, for a guy who usually is a Chrysler product person, how did this end up with you? Well, these cars came out when I was in high school, and I, I thought they were an attractive uh, car. Of course, it wasn't anything I was going to be able to buy. And uh, then in uh, 2003, they came out, or 2002, what was it? 2002, they came out with the, the new Thunderbird that was kind of a, a retro version of this car. Yep. And my wife wanted one, and so we got one at 2003, uh, and uh, she got it in this really the same color. So um, shortly thereafter, she got a big dog and wouldn't go anywhere without the dog, so she kind of <laughs> quit driving it. So the two-seater uh, didn't fit the size of the dog. Uh, more or less. So, uh, and then after that, it was Jeeps. So anyway, I had the car for a while, and I had it down in Florida, and it makes, it makes a real nice driver, those considering it, it's kind of midway between a collector car and a modern car, that uh, series of Thunderbirds. I think they were... 2002 to maybe 2005 so it was the same color and then this car came along and it was virtually the same color as my 2003 and I thought it'd be cool to have a pair of them and uh, so I had it for a, a couple of years but it wasn't all that cool it wasn't all that cool <laughs> yeah, it wasn't all that cool so this one's actually for sale uh, yes, a, a guy, a local guy restores these Thunderbirds only these Thunderbirds 5, 6 and 7s and I mentioned to him I, I had some interest in a 57, and it has to be the blue because they wanted it to match the 2003 I had. Well, so, uh, so I did get it. He had uh, fully restored it. He sold it to uh, uh, a guy who apparently never used it uh, and then uh, wanted to sell it. He contacted my friend, the restorer, and uh, he put me onto it. I subsequently met the guy that uh, bought it originally. Uh, I was told that after he bought it, he didn't use it at all, and then he was away for about a year, and then wanted to sell it when he returned. Well, uh, I did later learn that that away was he went to jail for a year. <laughs> so, so it's a so this one's a jailbird. <laughs> so you, this was the jailbird. You jail might bird. call it that. The jailbird. So, let's, uh, let's take. It, it was all restored, but it's typical if you buy a fully restored car, they always have to be sorted out. There'll be things that need adjustment, things that don't work. So that was the case here, and it took about a year, year and a half, uh, to have everything sorted out and uh, working properly. And let's take a look at our trunk and treats. So here we are in our trunk and treats, and I've already opened this up, so you could see this Thunderbird piece. Now an interesting piece right off the bat is if you read this top combination, you'll see that Quite a few of them had the soft top, like so it talks about here. I'll pause so you can get a second to read some of this. Here's some of your power assist pieces. talks about the accessories on the top. Here's your 34 sparkling two-tone combinations. And 
number six matching interiors. So this folds in half to show you that picture. Strict, strictly personal. And it shows everybody apparently looking over the hood. This almost looks like this car's color. So here's the 57 Thunderbird. And here's the back. I'll give you the overall. And then some specifications. Then here's your 57 Ford Thunderbird handbook. I won't go through all of that. But you can see the lubrication points for this one. The electrical system and some photographs as well. Power plant information, your fuel filter, thermostat, etc. And here was a little color guide. This one looks to be star mist blue, but it could be azure blue mid-year. And here's your trunk. Let's go back to the car. And we're back. Let's go to the interior. Well, we just found out that not only is it the baby blue bird, but it's the jailbird and it's for sale. So if you're interested in purchasing it, put it in the comments. I'll look at those. We'll get you my email. We'll send it off to Frank and we'll go from there. Now, right off the bat, first of all, I always thought the 57 Thunderbird was just the bomb. However, I will say that uh, the one challenge, and I'm, first of all, why don't I take your picture? Please? <laughs> if you want to. Alright, just hold the camera. So there is a little bit, just show it right there. There is a little bit of a, you kind of got to get your leg in there, dive in. Well, that is not the proper way, but I like watching you struggle. There we go. <laughs> like so, and you can see, if you look at my head, I'll take that back. If you look at my head, you can see it's pretty challenging to get in. And even if I do this, and we'll... You can see my head's right there at the roof line. Well, I'll, I'll do the demonstration later. I'm 100 pounds heavier and probably six inches taller. And I will, I will show you the, the proper technique. All right, I wanna see the proper technique. While I'm in here, let me look at the turned metal dash. You can see that clock working there, your lighter. And for those of you who might be interested, or serious, let me know. You got your automatic, your pedals, and your steering wheel. Well, I'll try to get it that way. It comes right in your lap. And that's all of them. That's just not this one. That's one of the things if you'll observe on that steering wheel, yep. these cars all came with uh, telescoping steering wheels. Okay. So you could loosen up that big neural nut and you could pull the wheel out. Uh, the wheel is, is all the way in. But I'd say there's not a person alive that would be get in this car and need to pull the wheel out. <laughs> it's so uh, tight to begin with, and that's a large steering wheel. They do offer now, as an accessory, a smaller steering wheel. It makes it easier to uh, get in and out. Let's, let's, see, let's see how it's done. All right. Well, I can tell you why I think they put that telescoping wheel on this car, because the period uh, English sports cars of the era, they all had telescoping wheels. No tilting, but all telescoping but there was a reason with for, for uh, in those cars 
There's no reason in this one. Okay, so here's the demonstration All right. of the correct approach. You, uh, now that I said that, back it up. All right, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right, now, oh, take, excuse me. Take two. Take two. Ah, dive into the car. That's how you gotta do it. The dive into the car, well played. Is there a hood latch there while you're there? Yes. All right, and where's the hood latch at? Well, it's not the... Uh, uh, too inconveniently located. Okay. okay, there. It's right there. That pulls up this way. Oh, very nice. And you can see that that's functional. I, uh, I might add, my major joy in owning the car is offering people to get in and into it. <laughs> what do we have there's here? There's not one in ten that's going to be able to, to do that I, without I a great amount of effort. I didn't do it so well. <laughs> Once, All right. once you're in, it's pretty good. What, what size engine do you have here? This is a 312. 312. What's this right here? And that is the power brake booster. The power I think that might have been a Thunderbird booster. thing uh, only, but, but I am not sure. Let me just go on this side. Well, this bird is clean. Well, it was all taken apart and redone uh, by a, uh, you know, a, experts in the field. And it's probably been driven, you know, 900 miles since it, uh, it was restored. So a, a couple of things about these cars. You'll, you'll see them advertised with uh, air conditioning. None of them came with air conditioning. They always had somewhat of a tendency to overheat. So if you go put air conditioning on there and, you know, you got another load on the, uh, on the engine, uh, that might be a problem when it really gets hot. I suppose if you change the radiator, that might help. Uh, but uh, it's, they, they, it's always been uh, an issue that uh, uh, overheating could be a problem. Uh, so another thing you see on these cars, you see wire wheels on them all the time, and I think it looks great that way. But the only wheel cover that uh, was available on them from the factory was the same wheel cover they put on the 57 Ford sedans. So if you look at these uh, wheel covers, they're, uh, the correct they're wheel. nothing special. They're the correct uh, wheel cover. Yes, you could either get that or they put the poverty wheel covers on. They, the full wheel cover was an option on the car. They had the poverty cups, uh, caps. Well, this one, the standard. this one is really well done. Let's uh, fire it up, shall we? Okay. You, you could have said that while I was already inside. <laughs> I want to see you jump in again. Do that dive move again. There we go. There's the dive. The dive and the turn. Step on the brakes for a second. Nice. And the exhaust comes right out the bumper. We got a little rumble to it. moisture out of it. Frank, let's take it for a ride and get all that moisture out of it. Now that's, this is what it looks like to have a six foot three person inside your Thunderbird. Start in neutral they, uh, uh, and uh, yet there's a park on the transmission. So you leave them in park, have to move to neutral in order to uh, start it. Start the car. Yeah, which I, on all my cars, I leave the keys in them at all times because no one would ever be able to figure out how to start any of them. <laughs> So I really don't worry about that. That steering wheel is clearly in your lap. So I'm just going to, you can see your head is right to the roof. Yeah, the convertible top on these, there, there are six latch points, which I don't think any car had any more latch points than this. There's two in front and there's four in back. So when you got it latched down, it's secure. <laughs> There's, there's no doubt that we are catching attention in this car.
first of all, lots the the footwork the footwork work footwork foot, the foot yeah. area yeah is leg comfortable room. leg room yeah. thank you that's what I was trying to yeah, say yeah it's okay once you get in it's a little awkward getting in and out they they do offer as an aftermarket option a smaller steering wheel okay. now power steering was not uh, standard on these cars and if you didn't have power steering you really needed the big wheel you know that's why all those fifties and, uh, and uh, 60s cars generally had big steering wheels because most of them didn't have power steering and you need a big wheel to get the torque to turn the wheel. Sounds pretty good. It sounds okay. I, I would prefer the, the, the stock muffler. exhaust. I, I would guess it's not that this was a noisy mufflers necessarily. It's just whatever brand uh, they were. Don't have much uh, silencing. I mean, it's smooth, it's comfortable, it's already getting beeps for about four seconds out of the driveway. Yeah. Well, I really like the color. I mean, I'm, I love pastel colors. I, I really like the shade of blue with the white interior. I always try to put um, cloth tops on my convertibles. Can't do that if it's going to be white. They look richer. The vinyl ones uh, shrink. You have issues as time goes on. If you happen to have a, a boot, which this doesn't have, to go over the uh, the top when it's down, and after not too long, it, it shrinks and you can't get it on anymore. Got it. So The cloth uh, is the way to go. It's the frank tip. Yeah. Yeah. This, a, a nice thing, too, uh, compared to, like, my Imperial, uh, my Imperial Zion, which are my favorite by far, uh, you can buy anything in this car. You, you could build one from parts, I think, maybe other than the frame. And yeah, the that's power. convenient. So... Here they have these aftermarket conversions on the radios. This is an AM, FM with all sorts of stuff. Uh, yet it appears to be a uh, stock original 57 uh, Thunderbird Town and Country radio. Well, of course, Frank, I don't know how it works, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> Frank, always fun to ride around yeah. in your collection of cars. What a treat. Well, there's a story on everything. And on all my cars, by the way, I have everyone has the factory radio and they all... Uh, and all those radios work. Um, a couple of them had aftermarket radios with those little teeny tiny buttons that I could never figure out how, how they how they work. And I pulled them out and found the original radios. Frank, what a treat. Thanks so much for being on the channel. Again, always a pleasure. Thanks for being on My Car Story. My pleasure.